In 1975, a school teacher who lived and taught in one of Chicago's most distressed areas became disenchanted with public education. Convinced that the failure of children to learn was the result of bureaucratic red tape and apathetic teachers, she rebelled and challenged the system. That teacher is Marva Collins, and this is her story. Anybody tries to take it away from you, you just give it up. You understand? Yes, sir. Come on, Daddy, I'll be late. Eric, do you have your lunch money? Yes, ma'am. I have to stay after. Mm. I have a teacher's conference. Listen here. Remember, keep your temper. I can't. Not if I think my students are going to get the short end. Marva, you can't fight the whole system, sugar. Wanna bet? You should have cereal in your mouth, sweetheart. Not smart <laughs> remarks. you. No! You're going to do what? Think for ourselves! Can you see? Oh, yeah. 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 want to go outside? Fine. Me? I have a lot of teaching to do, and I'm going to go right on doing it. Okay? Where were we? People! 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 You got to get our federal reports in on time. The deadline was last Thursday. I got seven. And three of those are incomplete. Mr. Duffy, is there anything we can do about the false alarms that keep interrupting the classes? Oh. 
False alarms are not on the agenda. You'll have to wait on that one. But we had another one today. That is the sixth one this week. Last week, we had eight of them. Can't we do something about those false alarms? Mrs. Collins, we're supposed to be talking about registers and federal reports. Now, the deadline was last week, and some of you still haven't turned them in. Tomorrow. Mine will be in tomorrow. Mr. Duffy, there are always forms to be filled out someplace. They are eternal. It is the loss of teaching time that concerns me. You're the assistant principal. Talk to the district. Yeah. Can't they do something about lessening our paperwork? The district? Those numbskulls lose one more IQ point, and Duffy will be talking to a plant. <laughs> <laughs> that is not funny. Just say you'll do the stupid report so we can get out of here. Yeah, give them some busy work and fill in the reports during class. Class time is for teaching. Why bother? They won't learn. They won't learn if we don't bother. I've scheduled a field trip for next Wednesday, the zoo. But the children have already gone to the zoo. The children love field trips. I think you love field trips, Miss Denny. It's easier than teaching. Why, the children don't even know which zoo they visited. In case you haven't noticed, Mrs. Collins, we are in a ghetto. These children don't want to learn. The ghetto is not the enemy, Miss Denny. I suppose you mean we are. Indifference is. I've had it up to here with your platitudes, Mrs. Collins. I, for one, don't get my kicks out of playing dress-up and strutting through this school quoting the classics. I dress the way I do, Miss Denny, because I happen to believe that my children deserve a positive image. Ladies, I agree ladies, with you ladies, very much. Please, I agree please. With you. The agenda, the agenda. Thank you. The next item, the boys' bathroom in the South Hall, OK? From now on, during regular class time, the boys' bathroom will be locked. Don't even bother to issue hall passes in the South Hall. All right? I All right. still happen to have this false alarm on my floor that keeps going oh, off, Mr. On, Duffy. Oh. Mrs. Collins, don't you have anything better to do than worry about that damn fire bell? Really? Yes. I do. Teaching. But between irrelevant zoo trips and false alarms, we are losing the battle. You are robbing us of class time, Mr. Duffy. Why don't you send your agenda on a field trip and let us teach? Come on, man. Hurry up. I've asked you not to put your fingerprints on the window, especially with glue on them. Mom, Cindy's looking at me again. Tell her to stop looking at me. I'm not looking at him. I'm looking through him. Cindy, please stop looking through your brother. And by the way, go downstairs and get me the clothes out of the machine, sweetheart. Oh, hi, Dad. Hey, Papa. Hey, Cindy. May I call Lenny Walker's house on Sunday? Patty, now you know that Sunday's family day. Besides, I thought we were going to go to the park on Sunday and fly these rockets. Hi, Ma. Oh, yeah, I kind of forgot, Dad. Oh, yeah, I kind of forgot, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Get everything? Oh, yeah, sure. So, uh, how'd the teacher's meeting go? I can't face another term, Clarence. I just can't. I still want to quit. Well, sugar. You're going to do what you're going to do. You want to teach someplace else, do it. No. I want to open my own school. Open your own school? Yes. Boy, you think you're worn out now. At least that way I'll be able to give some of the children in the area the education they deserve. Yeah, sure, but you just be giving up one set of problems for a whole set of bigger ones. Clarence, there'll always be problems. Just going to school for some of these children is a problem. So where are you going to have your school? How are you going to pay for it? Please don't try to stop me with details. I will find a place, and I will find the money. Sugar Pie, tell me something. Does the word impossible have any meaning for you at all? No. Sweetheart? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. My children, follow me, please. 
Well, why do you bother, Mrs. Collins? The kid's nothing but trouble, and he's a dummy. Nine years old, he can't even spell his name. Now, that's not funny, children. You do not laugh at things like that. Come on. Inside. Hey. We didn't do it. Of course not. Whoever did it has a key. Do you want me to get Mr. Duffy? No, sweetheart, that's not necessary. Please go take your seats, children. I want a few of you to help me pick up some of this. I guess I've been sharing my pride with the wrong people at the wrong time. Some people get jealous. But we will never let others stop us from what? Learning! Learning. All right, so let's have your theme. Listen, Peach. Whoever messed up my desk wants to upset us. It's up to us to decide whether we're going to let them or not. And quitting or running to Mr. Duffy or even crying isn't going to change a thing. Quitting did not build a Sears Tower, nor did it write the Magna Carta. Children, you must remember that when you enter the workforce, nobody's going to care that they broke into your teacher's room or whether or not you had sheets to sleep on when you were little or whether you grew up in the ghetto. The only thing your boss is going to care about is what? Whether you can, can. or can. can. That's right. So, who is the most important child in this world? I am. And what is the most important time? Now. Now. And I don't want you to waste either one of them. So, that's everything. <laughs> It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the time of war and peace. The Nutcracker Suite and Tolstoy and Dostoevsky. I've made up my mind, Clarence. I'm not going back. What you're really saying is that you're serious about starting that school, huh? Oh, we can do it, Clarence. I knew we can. After all, what's a school? They're teaching some students, right? And books, and desks, and blackboards. And what about a classroom? Oh, we can we... just move out the tenants upstairs. And those two back rooms will break down the wall between them. Break. Classroom, that's all I need. Oh, babe, it's not that simple. Everything would have to be rewired, reframed. And you know, if we move those tenants out, our income will be cut down even more. My retirement fund is almost $5,000, Clarence. And I'll get donations. I'll write to big companies. I'll ask them for desks, papers, whatever else all we right, need. All right, all right, fine. Well, what about students? Who's going to donate them? The neighborhood. Oh, Barbara. You know these people can't afford tuition. Well, they pay parochial schools. 
And I know whatever they do, I can do better. And you'd really draw out your retirement money? Yes, I would. It means that much to you. Well, I guess you better turn in your keys then. File for your permit. Excuse me, can you help me, please? Did you take a number? What can I do for you? I'd like to open a private elementary school, and I'd like to apply for a license. You don't need one. No county or state license is required. You mean anyone can start a school without a permit, credentials, or anything? That's about the size of it. Unless, of course, you want recognition. No, thanks. I already know who I am. Uh, no, I mean, you don't have to have a license, but you do want the state to know who you are. When you apply for recognition, a team will visit you, and they will check your school for health, safety, and curriculum. Once you have their sanction, you got free milk, Three books. He who eats my bread does my will. <laughs> I beg your pardon. You see, if I accepted government handouts, I'd have to listen to them. And I don't want anyone telling me how to teach. Suit yourself. But there are a lot of parents that won't put their kids in a school unless it's recognized. Oh, just a minute, please. I'm a little confused. Uh, let me get this straight. For me to get recognition, I would have to fill out all of these forms. But if I just wanted a license to start my school, I wouldn't have to do anything? Amazing, isn't it? Well, what if I were crazy or demented or illiterate? If you're illiterate, you're lucky. No forms to fill out. We're going to need more than that to keep us on the top. What about your letter writing campaign? 439. I've written every major corporation in Chicago. To get any replies? Well, a company sent us a check for $5. Enough sent us a bunch of old paper they were going to throw out anyway. Oh, that's big of them. Bigger than 437 others. Ready, gang? Christen thee. What is it? Westside Preparatory School. We christen thee Westside Preparatory School. Hit it! Gracious. What happened? 
happened here? Somebody rob a bookstore? Hi, baby. No, a school. They're getting rid of them. And Cindy and I heard about it. Five loads before we got caught. <laughs> nails. Who would think nails would cost so much? Oh, by the way, Cindy, Patty, pay attention. Your mom and I were talking. We really can't afford tuition. So how would the two of you like to go to school upstairs? Fantastic! Great! All right. What about me, Dad? Well, you're a little old for your mama's school, son. So you just have to keep going to St. Joseph's, all right? Guess what? I'm Cynthia Cole. She's coming to visit us. <laughs> oh, Eric, stay right there. That window in. You want him to break every window in the house? What do you do with kids like this? You go. Somebody ought to. Do what? Sue him. Take away his bicycle. Honey, let him go. He doesn't have a thing to lose. Sweetheart, we don't have money to fix broken windows. You break our windows and we're going to be cold. Now, you know what it's like to be cold, don't you? Don't you? And you don't want me and my family to be cold, do you? No. No. I didn't think so. Come on, now. You gonna help me clean up this mess? Yes? And didn't I break up a scuffle you were in at school? Yeah, but hey, we not be knowing this. Your house, teacher. We're just sort of chucking rocks at everything. Pilot? Not a pilot, exactly. He wore a gun and raid on a chopper in Vietnam. And that's practically the pilot. Because no one be flying without him. My dad's going to get me a model like that. When I grow up, I'm going to be a pilot just like him. <laughs> I used to be a teacher at Martin School. Has he been in some kind of trouble? No, no. I'm starting a school. A place to teach children what they aren't getting from public schools. I ain't going to no school, Martin! Teachers don't think your son is too bright. I think they're wrong. I think he's a real winner. Then why can't he read and write? May I come in? Right, right. Who wants to? Well, you want to be a fly, don't you, Pete? If you don't learn to read and write, the closest you'll ever get to a plane is looking up at it in the sky. She's right, Martin. His school says he needs to be in a learning disability class. Has it helped him any? No, but I really don't know what else to do. Ever since his daddy left, that boy been a six-pack of lightning. Give me a chance. 
We don't have much money. Pay what you can. Well, I do like what you say. We'll see. But even if I said yes, you still have to get him there. No. I think if Martin wants to be a flyer, if he really wants to be a winner, he'll come by himself. Window. Gang busted. Nine year old. That window was Clarence's pride and joy. Too. Hey, look, two halves this time. Woo! What a Christmas. Well, turn up here. Why is Mother always sending us all this frozen beef, Cynthia? Because you live in a ghetto. Oh, and please. she thinks you're all starving to death. <laughs> We're a school now, Aunt Cynthia. Did you know that? All by ourselves, a schoolhouse now. With emphasis on the all by ourselves, but wait till you see the classroom, Cynthia. It is wonderful. Oh. I am so excited. I'm going to have a hard time explaining myself to Mama. <laughs> she sent me up here to talk you out of all this. If Mama's in Chicago, <laughs> she'd be out on the streets rounding up students. <laughs> well, I guess it's just as well that she's not here. Why are you doing this? I want to teach. So transfer to another school. You don't have to stay in this neighborhood. This neighborhood used to be a very nice place. And after 15 years, I still care about it. But to give up a, a well-paying job, your retirement money, your tenants, you're putting all that on the line for a school that can't hope to support itself. Marva, you have three of your own children to educate. Cindy and Patty will go to school here. And you know I wouldn't shortchange them. What about Eric? He wants to be a doctor. How do you hope to finance that? We'll find a way. This school is going to work, Cynthia. Don't ask me how. I just know it. It's going to work. Leave me alone. I don't understand. He was coming right home. Now, just stop it, will you please? Sorry. Come from work, you know, I'm afraid you'll miss your flight. Oh, no, 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 it'll be okay. We have a few more minutes. Hey, that's our car! The one with the desk on top of it! Oh, there you got some desk. What in the world is that? Well, I know he didn't Wait, buy any desk. We can't afford to buy desk. Hi, Daddy. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm late. What happened? God, work gave me a tip on a liquidation sale. Hi, uh, Dad. Liquidation sale? What kind of store selling students' discs? It wasn't a store. It was a boys' school. Went out of business. I hope that's not an omen. Got them for $2 a piece. Two but it was now or never. They wanted them gone. Come on, come on. What about us? No time. There's not enough room. I come at this. $40. 
How many students you got? Counting Patty and Cindy. Five. Any paying? Well, just so you know, we're going to break even. About two-thirds of these desks here have to have paying customers. Oh, we'll make it, Clarence. I just know we will. Oh, by the way, Bob Clemens called. He wants me to remodel his basement. Well, I hope you told him you couldn't. You've been working too hard, honey. Sugar, we can use the money. Well, from here on out, we're living on plastic. Open it. To my precious husband, the moving force of my dream. My love and my thanks, Martha. P.S. This is good for 25 free half hour back rubs. I thought I'd put a buzzer up here. Thank you. Oh, you keep your seat. I'll get it. I'm going that way anyway. I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to do something I have not done in a long, long time. I'm going to fall asleep in front of the TV. Clarence. Yeah, babe? Thank you. Together. Miss Collins? Yes. I'm uh, Leela Bowling. Your husband let me in. Can I help you? Is this the school Miss Johnson's daughter, Roxanne, is going to go to? Yes. I uh, came about my little girl, Tina. She's 10. She's been going to the fifth grade over at St. Mary's, but. I was hoping maybe you would take her. My husband and me, we didn't even know it was nothing wrong till the last day of school. I mean, uh, Chester and I could see that she wasn't learning so fast, but we figured the school knew what it was doing. And all of a sudden, they tell us Tina can't even read and they're gonna have to hold her back. Collins, when they told Tina she was failing, it was like something went out of her. She don't hardly talk no more. And when she does, all she can say is, Mommy, am I dumb? Or am I a retard? And she's so nervous, real nervous, like, uh, and sad. I took her to a psychiatrist. He said it was trauma. He said that school really messed her up. Here, it's two hundred dollars. And when it's used up, you let me know. I can't take your money yet, honey. 
Why don't we just try it for a few days? And maybe if it... No. My child can't take no maybes. If she starts, she stays. Please. I hear you're a good teacher. Real kind and gentle. Please, Miss Collins. All right. All right. Have her here tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. find my way out. Thank you, Miss Collins. It's all right. Thank you again. $200. You gave that woman $200 to send our baby to this? This is just a broken down old house. Where the playgrounds? Where the classrooms? At least at the other school she had to. She wasn't learning nothing. What are we supposed to do? Send her back there? Put her in a public school? When you think about it, we don't have no choice. Good morning, children. I am Mrs. Collins. Welcome to success. Success. It is the opposite of failure. It is from a language called Latin. It means to achieve, to get riches, fame, happiness. It means climbing the highest mountain on earth. Or seeing the pyramids. It means learning to fly, going to the moon. Handsome boys, do not you go. Or becoming president of the United States. You children were born to win. And I'm going to show you how. Class will start at 9, lunch, 12.30. It will last only 20 minutes. You will come here clean and well-groomed. If you don't, there's plenty of soap and water right downstairs. There'll be no baby work, no C-spot run books, so you won't be bored. But it will be hard. You will read a difficult book twice a month. You'll memorize a poem every week. And you'll write a theme every single day. There will be mathematics, vocabulary, history. Say what? I ain't doing all that junk. Who needs it? I don't got to learn nothing. It's all right, Mark. If you do not wish to learn, if you do not want an education, all you have to look forward to in life is poverty and welfare. You see, children, 
The system has people con. Welfare is just another word for slavery. For instance, did you ever know a child on welfare to go to Hawaii, to eat in fine restaurants, live in nice houses? That's the first thing I hope you learn. That there are no free rides. That you pay a price for everything. So, if you want to live a decent life, you'll just have to work for it. I ain't doing none of that stuff. I am not doing any of that stuff, Bonnie. Any of that stuff. Say it. I am not, I doing, am not doing any of that stuff. Any of that stuff. You have that right. It's a free country life. If you do not wish to learn, you have the right to fail. Now listen. I love you. I love you. You're a bright boy. You're a handsome boy. But you do not have the right to disturb the other children's right to learn. Now, if you wish to fail, you may do so quietly. Stop interrupting. And stop tapping that pencil. Pick it up. Get up. Thank you. All right, children. Let's get to work. Reading. In one month's time, you will be able to read any word you can say. You will do it with a special word key. If you wanted to get into a house without a key, you would have to break the doors down or force your way into it. But the key is easier, right? Right. Right, right Mrs. Collins. Right, right. Mrs. Collins. Mrs. With a special word key, we no longer have to guess at words or struggle to get inside of them. You see these alphabet cards? They are our greatest friends because they will help us to learn the sounds that each letter makes. Roxanne, would you recite the alphabet for us? Come on, sweetheart. Of course you do. Come on, give it a try. A, B, C, D. Let's see that pretty face. Come on. E, F, G. K, Q. Come on, sweet guy. Good try, Roxanne. Good try. Good try. All right, Tina. How much of it do you know? Ma, don't we look pretty this morning on little green balls? Hmm? Come on. How much do you know? Please. I can't. I. I'd be too dumb. I am, sweetheart. I be is idiomatic slang. And we never say can't. Not in this school. So, if I ever hear you talk like that again, it's 30 lashes with a wet noodle. Huh? <laughs> Come on, darling. Come on, sweetheart. Teacher, me. I know the alphabet. All right, Martin. Maybe Tina would like to write it instead. Would you like to write it, Tina, while Martin says it? All right, Martin. Go ahead. Let's A, B, C, Slower. D, E, F, G, Very good, Tina. H, I, J. Very good. K. Slower, Martin. Dang! That's wrong! Not wrong, Martin. We do not say wrong. That's very good, Tina. It's a good try. It's not quite right. 
Well, together, we'll make it right. We'll proofread it. Children, when we make a mistake... I don't want to see this stupid junk. Martin, would you like me to sit down and show you how well I can behave while you come up here and teach? When we make a mistake, children, we do not erase it because we'll only make the same mistake again. What we do is proofread it by putting a circle around it. That way, we remember the letter and the sound. Very good, Tina. Very good. Look at that. Happy face. You've made me very happy just by trying. You know something, Tina? You will never fail again. I promise you. Because I won't let you. That's very, very good. I call that education. Tina, in the fifth grade, that woman teaching her the ABC. Shh, she'll hear you. I don't care if she hear me. Look at it. It is not right. Miss Collins explained that when I picked Tina up. She says Tina's been too wounded to be corrected much. She has to take it slow, win Tina's confidence. Just like that other school. Hold her hand. Help her make mistakes till she fail altogether. I won't have it, Leela. I won't. It's been one day, Chester. Give the woman a chance. I want you to get your money back. Take that girl and put her in a parochial school, and I want you to do it tomorrow. If that's what you want, then you do it. But don't go taking back none of my money. That smile on my baby's face is the first one I've seen in months. And at $200, I think that's a real bargain. And what does the ants do? Work. And the grasshoppers? Play. The ants put first things first. first. Right, Roxanne, Tina, and Martin, please go to the board and spell the word first. First. The rest of you work on your math, please. Eh? Look at the alphabet charge, children. What is the sound that the angry cat makes? Angry cat, angry, angry cat. I-R, er, roaring lion, roaring lion, er, er, er. Flat tire, flat tire. You're writing too small, pet. That's because you're afraid I'll see your mistakes. Remember, children, if you cannot make a mistake, you cannot make anything. Ticking clock. Ticking clock. Ticking clock. Laudo. Laudo. L-A-U-G-O. It is Latin for I praise you. See, Pet? You got it right. You got it right. You have just proven that if you know the rules, you never have to guess at anything. You are just getting so smart, Lamb. Hmm? I'm going to have to put you on my payroll. I'm bored. You said we wouldn't be bored. You don't look bored to me, Martin. You look angry. But that's all right. Everybody gets angry sometimes. For instance, sometimes, sweetheart, I get so angry with children not knowing how to read and write that I could just cry. I love you, sweetheart. I love you so much that all I want for you in this life is that you learn to read and write. And then you'll never have to be bored again. Of course, now, if you'd rather go back to that other school where you just color and have potty recesses like a baby, that's all right with me. It's a free country. I won't hold you. Cindy, get that for me, honey. Yes, ma'am. All right. Let's get back to Aesop's face. What was the moral? I mean, what do you think the ant and the grasshoppers tried to tell us? Work, work, work. Morning. Good morning. Mom, I'm home. Who are you? I'm from the fire department. I'm an inspector. So is she home? Well, why do you want to know? Well, because somebody told us she's operating a school here, and I want to make sure it's safe. Who? Who what? Who said my mommy was operating a school? Just somebody in the neighborhood. So is she? Is she which, at home or operating a school? Either. Both. You have to ask her. I will if you'll go get her. Can't. Why not? She's at school.
And in the end, Jude died right in the sight of Christ's minister. And he could hear the bells of the school where he always wanted to go, but never could. And Arabella didn't make it. It was real sad. That's a beautiful story, Miss Beautiful. Wasn't that a beautiful story, children? Yes, yes Mrs. Collins. Now, that's a book that I've not read. May I borrow from you, Cindy? Yes, ma'am. You see, children, I'm still learning. What is the lesson to be learned from Thomas Hardy's book? What do you think he's trying to tell us in Jude the Obscure? Well, in that society of England, education was denied people who were from the right class, who didn't have any money. Right. Now, let's tell our new students, Truman and Francine, why it's so important to learn. So we can think for think ourselves. Think for yourself. You see, children, I teach you because I love you. But I never want to teach you my thoughts. Your thoughts must be your own. Of course, Martin will never have any thoughts of his own because he's too busy to think. So when the man comes and offers him two tens for a $50 bill, he'll never know whether he has a good deal or not. I know that. He'd have to give me five tens for a 50. I'm no dummy. Then maybe you know that the good Lord gave us two ears and one mouth so we could listen. Twice as much as we talk. <laughs> I can listen and talk at the same time because eyes as fine as a shiny new dime. That's beautiful, Martin. Beautiful. Now, for tomorrow, I want you to look up the etymology of the word dime. Where and when it was minted and how much silver went into it. That's your homework for tomorrow. Because I'm going to get more than a shiny new dime's worth of learning out of you. <laughs> Martin! <gasps> I feel so sorry for you, baby. You've probably been kicked all your life. It's probably the only thing you really understand. If that's the only way to get rid of all that anger, then you better kick me. I'm big enough, and I won't kick back. Go on. Get it out of your system. Kick me. I will, you know. I know you will. But I won't love you any less. Go on. Kick me, that you applied, but we can't find the application. Great. 
That's just great. You can fill out another application and then in a month or... It took me three days to fill out those forms. And at the rate you process them, my children will be college age. Well, if you want the free milk and books... I do not want your free books and milk. I want to survive. I want my school full of students. Unfortunately, that means giving a few skeptical parents an endorsement from a system I don't even want to have anything to do with. Recognition is a service. We don't have to give it to you, you know. Recognition? I don't need your recognition. I can get my own. What is the hardest achievement test the schools give? California achievement? National standard? Or the metropolitan achievement, maybe. Let's throw in the SRA. I'll have them all test my children. You have minority students, Mrs. Collins. Those examinations will only hurt your case. They're prejudiced by as much as 15%. You analyze statistics. You play tennis with red tape. Me, I will have my children tested. And then I will have the scores public. That's one tough bra. You bet I am, mister. But let me tell you something. It's a tough world out there. And until you start telling the children that, until I see schools teaching the way they used to, or until I find a parent who tells me he likes your ways better than he does mine, this tough broad will keep right on teaching, even if I have to do it on the steps of City Hall. Instead of worrying about us, they ought to clean their own house for a change. Look at this. This morning's newspaper. Shakespeare was a famous writer of the 1890s? Student essays. That reporter did a survey on suburban high school children and what they know about Shakespeare. The global, global. The global theater is a three-sided octagon. <laughs> I'll write him a letter. Macaroni and cheese? Not again! Patty, you should thank the good Lord we have the wisdom of what to buy anything at all. Which reminds me, the visa bill came. Patty, go get your brother and shake it. Your daddy has to get back to work. Well, you still didn't answer my question about the application. I told them what to do with their application. That's when I said I'd have our children tested. Cindy? Yes, ma'am. We have no napkins here. Yes, ma'am. Well, then what? Then I left. Well, that's all? All? Dealing with those bureaucrats. Patty, put on your glasses. Tell me that you've lost them again. Did you? Children, what do we have to do to make you realize what things cost? And you mumbling and grumbling about macaroni. Well, you've just lost ten steak dinners, child. Cindy, sit down. Children, for the one hundredth time, your daddy and I cannot finance your carelessness. I know what we can make up for it. I... I can stop going to St. Joseph. No, you will not. We all have a job to do in this house. Mine is to find the money. Yours is to get an education. Understood? May I be excused? I'm not very hungry. You seen my soldering iron? We were using it in Patty's room. Fins kept coming off his spaceship. His spaceship is plastic. The spaceship was plastic. Can't tell that boy anything. So why don't you tell me why you want to leave school? Some of the kids coming down on me, that's all. Coming down on you. You starting to feel black? I always feel black. Oh, and you know what I mean. No, at a school like that isn't cool to be prejudiced. So what's the problem? Just picking on me. You can walk around that, can't you? It's 
It's not so easy. Mm. Don't them. Well, I don't think leaving school is the answer. I don't want you to be one of those people that jumps up and run when things don't work, you know. If I don't run, I gotta fight. And I know how you and Mom are about fighting. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes... They have to make decisions that uh, don't please everybody. Not even mom and dad. You know what I mean? What am I supposed to do? Well, if it's a matter of your self-respect, I guess you have to stand up for yourself. I just don't want you out there fighting for the wrong reasons. Don't fight because you're angry or you don't like somebody. Gotta fight. If you're gonna fight, just make sure you're fighting for something important. Is my self respect important enough? To me, it is. I think there's any supper left. I think I'm hungry. How about a kiss? I know where they keep the leftovers. No! Marissa, baby, stop it. Stop it. Do it for Mommy. No! You want to make Mommy happy? No! Like I told you on the phone, Mrs. Collins, you have to be gentle with her. But she'll mind. You'll see. You'll mind, won't you, honey? No! You'll stay here with Mrs. Collins today, and tonight we'll go have hamburgers and shake, okay, Collins? No! Please! She's not bargain with a child, Mrs. Lester. No! has an IQ of 75. She's just a little girl. You want her in the school? Yes, but I don't know. Then you'll have to give me control. That's the only way I'll operate. Just trust me. Clarissa, listen to me. No. I said listen to me. Now you can cry all you want, but in the end you'll still have to mind me. Clarissa, listen. So why don't you save those tears and me some grief and just behave right off, okay? Because you're going to be fine, baby. Now, what can I do for you? I'm Officer Martisich from the fire department. I've been trying to catch up with you all winter. Could have called. We're in the book. A field visits are better, even if it does take six of them. That way, when I'm being avoided... Say no more. Just one question. Are you or are you not operating a school in this building? You said we need it. Good morning, Mrs. Collins. Thank Good you, morning. Roxanne. Good morning, Good morning, children. Good morning. What if I told you that we're a big family that likes to ride on walls? You think you'll go away? No. I hate you! Well, that's too bad, Clarissa, because I love you. You and I shouldn't be fighting each other. The sooner the anger goes, the more room there is for love, the more room there is for knowledge. And then three of you. Maybe I just have to keep polishing and polishing and polishing till the real Clarissa comes shining through. Hmm? Okay? Children, I have something to tell you. You're gonna have to take some tests. Don't worry about it. There are some people who wonder whether or not you're learning anything here. I told those people they didn't have a test hard enough nor big enough to show what you children have learned here. Right? Right, Mrs. Collins. All right. Okay, how about some things? Eddie? Shall I stand? Sure. <laughs> Duty, honor, and country. When I was reading about Socrates' death, I really liked this quote. I am a citizen, not of Athens or of Greece, but of the world. So here is my quote. I'm not a Chicago child or a child of this school. I'm a universal child of the world. And my duty is to pass on my knowledge to others. Just as Socrates taught Plato, and Plato taught Aristotle, and he taught Al the Great. Caribbean, Caribbean, that's French for very good. Very good, Eddie. 
my son had a teacher like you. You know, he's a straight-A student, and he can't do half what I just saw. Yeah, I like your style, Mrs. Collins. You like it well enough to forget this inspection business? Uh, I wish I could. You see, what you're doing up there is terrific, only you shouldn't be doing it up in that room. That room is all we have, all the children have. This neighborhood doesn't even have a truant officer. Seems to me someone's actually trying to educate... Classrooms could... need ceiling sprinklers, fire exits. Here's a list of the changes that have to be made. Uh, I'll tell you what, I won't file my report for a while. At least that way you have a little time. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Mom here? Um, honey, um, go into your room. Leave me and Mrs. Collins alone for a while. I got your letter. You wanted to talk about it? Mind if I sit down? S suit yourself. Thank you. I guess you want to know why Eddie won't be coming to your school no more. Well, if there's a problem, let's work it out. Eddie really likes you, and I know that you've done wonders with him, and I'm real thankful. But, well, I just think he needs to try a good public school, get a new experience. And he did real good when he was there before. But, Mrs. Bambauer, I was his teacher. Is it the money? <laughs> it's, it's not. It's like I said, I just think he needs a change. That's all. Does it have anything to do with me? And you're sure it's not the money? Ain't that what I say it? Mrs. Banbaum, please. I think you're making a big mistake. Another school can't give Eddie the care I will. Nor the time, nor the attention, nor... Please, don't take him away from me. You just keep right on pushing, don't you? Don't take him from me, she says. Well, I've got a word for you. That child in there ain't yours. He's mine. And I don't want you taking him away from me. I, I'm not. It's either you or that school. That's all he talks about. That's all he thinks about. It's not normal. Since you felt this way, why didn't you say something earlier? The way I see it is, it's not those kids you care about. Just that stuff that you're teaching them. That's not true. You sure? You pump those little minds real speedy like. Do you care how fast you go? Ever stop and think that you might be going just too fast? That child in there, he don't want to play no more. He don't want to watch TV. All he wants to do is read. Read and study. For them other parents, that might be fine. But me... Miss Collins, I don't care if he can't speak no fancy languages. I don't care if he knows Shakespeare. All I want my boy to do is learn how to read and write and be happy and get along with people. But I want the same thing. But you. I don't know what you're trying to prove. And the way you push. It's, it's like you're experimenting or something. Well, I've got a word for you. My child ain't no lab rat. So, huh? 
wanted to go. Mrs. Bambow's taking Eddie out of school. Says she doesn't like the way I teach. I'm experimenting with her child. Maybe she's right. Sugar. I think you make a little too much out of this, don't you? Yes. Clarence. Yeah, but... If Mrs. Bambow is right, I wonder how many other mothers feel that way. I wonder if I am pushing the children too hard. Maybe I want too much for them. And in 16 years we've been married, I have never seen you in the classroom. But it doesn't matter. I still know you're the best there is. How can I? How do you know? Do you remember our first date? What happened just before we went into the restaurant? There was this little child who was trying to strike a match, a little boy. And you went over to talk to him. It was like the two of you stepped into a world where grown-ups don't even exist. I remember you told him about the great Chicago fire. 17,000 buildings burned to the ground, you said. The way you talked, I could smell the smoke myself. Then you told him about Mrs. O'Leary's cow. Cow didn't put the lantern in the way beach. It wasn't the cow's fault. <laughs> well, that child's eyes were as big as melons. And he just handed you the matches. You know, you might have saved Chicago from another major fire. Hmm? Point is, Shutter, when I saw you with that child, I knew anybody would know. And I said to myself right then and there, I'm going to get that one. I am going to eat <laughs> Well, I tell you, picnic that I remember. What picnic? The one where I borrowed four children. Yes, I was pretty stuck on you by then. I didn't know whether you liked children or not, so I just borrowed a few. <laughs> I take that I passed your little test. You surely did. <laughs> My matter of fact, you had me a little worried there for a minute. Mm. Mm-hmm. You pay more attention to those children than you did to me. Well, I was probably just trying to make it nervous or jealous, huh? Well, you did pretty well, believe me. You <laughs> did all right. <laughs> See. I still got a couple of those free back rubs now. How about you and me sharing one? <laughs> Polished chip like that. I won't see you like that tomorrow. Two plus one. Now, isn't that a smart angel? See, I knew you could do it. This is just the kind of question those exam people are going to give you. What do you do first? Thank you. Speak up, cupcake, and look at me. And don't sit all hunched over, baby. Sit up straight. And speak like you believe what you're saying. Children, it's like going into the First National Bank and saying, Take me 
today. How's it going? Oh, we'll find a way, honey. Soon school will be out and I'll find another job. Sugar, you're talking I... about doing temporary measures and what we're dealing with. Here's a major flood. We just got to get back to reality. The reality is that Westside Prep School is doing what we built it to do, Clarence. It's teaching. Listen, by this time next year, we'll... Marvin, there's not gonna be a next year. Are you saying we should quit? Uh, Clarence, we've come so far. Oh, honey, it's gonna work. Please believe me. I don't know how I know, but it will work, Clarence. Sugar, I believe in what you're doing. I mean, you know that. Well, but... but we just can't afford it. Look at this. This bill has to be paid in 10 days. $400. We haven't got 400 cents. It's not just a school anymore. We're going to lose a car, the house. Everything, sugar. Everything. No! No, you haven't. You should have told That's the fuel bill. Four hundred dollars. Mr. Collins and I have a whole bundle of those bills downstairs. Papers. Books. Keeping my family fed and clothed while we get the school off the ground. That one's due next week. And I don't know how we're going to pay it. But as sure as there's a God in heaven, as sure as the sun's gonna shine, so help me, huh? We'll find a way. Meanwhile, I want four hundred dollars worth of learning out of you today. All right, who's gonna recite their poem for you? Keep a go by Frank L. Stanton. If you strike a thorn or rose, keep a go. If it hails or if it snows. Keep a goal. Tain't no use to sit and whine when the fish ain't on your line. Bake your hook and keep a trying. Keep a goal. When the weather kills your crop, keep a goal. Those who work to reach the top, keep a goal. Expose you out of every dime. Getting broke ain't any crime. Tell the world you're feeling crime. Keep a goal. If by Rudyard Kipling. If you can keep your head all about you by losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they're gone. And so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will that says to them, hold on. If you can feel the unforgiving man with 60 seconds worth of distance from 
Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. And how would you like to be remembered, Rose? I want to be the first black woman on Mars. First black woman on Mars. And you, Stephen, what would you like the history books to say about you? That I was a champion jockey and I took all my winnings and built stables so that the people around can have horses. Very good. Roxanne, would you bring me that book on Socrates? Mrs. Collins, there's a man in the hall. Bill Collector, you get it and I get it. If you're from the county of the state, take me to court. I'm Zay Smith from the Sun-Times. You wrote me a while back, sent me some student papers. <sighs> I'm so sorry. How do you do? Lady, those were some papers. Thank you. It's taken me a little longer than I would have liked, but I wanted to find out what it was all about. To school, Mr. Smith? Plain and simple? your butt when you're flying over the China Seas. <laughs> children, settle down, children. <laughs> settle down. We have a guest, Mr. Zay Smith from the Sun-Times. He heard how smart you children are, and he's here to see for himself. Look around for a while. Have a seat, if you like. So, where were we? Ah, Socrates. Socrates said he was a citizen of the world. Rose said today that she would like to be the first woman on Mars. That would make her citizen of the universe. Sehr gut. What does that mean? Very good. In what? German. German. Brian, pay attention. You won't know where that man is 10 years from now. His name will be on your paycheck. <laughs> he was strong. He had to do all these things. He had to kill the lion and clean the Argent stables. Argent. Argent stables and do 12 things, cause Hera said so. Oh, what a beautiful story, Clarissa. And you read that book all by yourself, Peach? Oh, I am so proud of you. See, I knew you could do it. Do you know the next time what I want you to do? I want you to read Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Now, that's a bigger book, but do you know how we read big books? The same way we eat an elephant, right? One bite at a time. Oh, I am so proud of you. All right, everybody out. Oh. Come on out and let this oh. tired lady get off of her feet. Brenda, that was an excellent oh, yeah. report you gave us to Truman. I want you to bring in your poem tomorrow. Goodbye, baby. Come on. All right. Pick up all the pencils and the books off the floor, children. May Cindy and I have some cookies, Mom? Can I go, go with them? All right, you can stay there. Come on, Bye, baby. Come on. Come on. Bye, bye, baby. Rose, no more chewing gum in your mouth. I didn't want to see it moving like a cow tomorrow. That was an excellent cookie today. They actually don't want to leave. What's the secret? Love, hard work, and a very strong pair of legs. Well, there's more to it than that. There must be. <sighs> Why won't people just accept the fact that good old-fashioned teaching works? I mean, it works with poor kids, rich kids, black, white, purple, anything. It doesn't matter. Well, is this some sort of program? Uh, do you get federal money? Come here, Mom and Pete. Give a man a fish and what? He'll eat for a day. Teach him to fish, huh? He'll eat forever. Who said that? 
Marcus Aurelius. You are just getting so smart, I'm gonna have to make you a teacher. <laughs> That's why I don't accept federal funds. Hmm? They've been pouring federal funds into this neighborhood for years. Hasn't changed. In my estimation, federal funds is not the solution. It's part of the disease. And you're the antidote? No, no, not me. But I'll tell you this, everything works when teaching works. It's as easy as that, and it's hard. The students, they're terrific. You must have handpicked them. Most of the children I never met until their first day. And of the 15, 13 were failing or were in learning disability classes. But why am I trying to convince you? They're going to have to take a test. Then maybe you can see for yourself. You will use this answer sheet for all the tests you are about to take. You must use a soft lead pencil to mark your answer sheet. Do not use a ballpoint pen or a hard pencil. If the point on your pencil breaks, just raise your hand and I'll give you a new one. Now, at the top of the left-hand side of the answer sheet, Pete, find the word I want to take that test. Why not? I'm scared I'll fail. We will fill in oh, honey, you're not going to fail. I don't want to pass either. If I pass, I'll have to leave you. Tina, I'm not going to let you go until you're ready. But when you're ready, you're going to have to go. That's what this school is all about. Learning to stand on your own. But I'm scared. But everybody gets scared. I get scared too. Do you know what I do when I get scared? I think of something that Victor Hugo said. He said, have courage for the great sorrows of life and patience for the small ones. And when you have finished your daily task, go to sleep and have peace, knowing that God is awake. I sure hope he was right. Oh, he's right, honey. He's right. You will have 20 minutes to complete this section of the exam. We've worked very hard studying for these tests, and they're going to show a lot of people how smart you really are. But that's not what's really important. What's really important is that who's the most important child in the world? Me! And what is the most important time? Now! Now! Go to it. Ready? Begin. Telephone games. What? Thank you, Penguin. Yes. Well, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, Saturday? Yes. Sure. What page? 52. Thank you. Thank you. Eric! Daddy, come quick! Our school is in the newspaper! And then they from the newspaper police said they had so many telephone calls they want to do a follow-up story. Boy, I'd like to see those bureaucrats try to give us a hard time now. And the phone's been ringing off the hook, Dad. People want to send money. Oh, but just a few. Most of them want to know about enrollment. And you know what else? The woman who's having mom do the teaching seminar called up. She wants to give me five hundred dollars. And she said if all goes well, she'll help me book others. Isn't that terrific? <laughs> but you know it's going to take an awful lot of those seminars to empty out that dish. Oh, children, tell your daddy to be quiet. <laughs> Antonio, how much money? Tina. Three thousand ducats. Three thousand ducats. And your book says that that's... Stephen? Twenty-five thousand dollars. But the price of gold has gone up. Did anyone check the price of gold last night? Brenda. One hundred thirty-one dollars and seven cents an ounce. One hundred and thirty-one dollars and seven cents per ounce. Brenda, will you go to the board and figure out how many dollars that would be today? And the theme, children, what is the theme? Prejudice. Reverse prejudice. Reverse prejudice? Explain that, Patty. 
See, Shylock was prejudiced. We never begin a sentence with C. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Shylock was prejudiced against people who were prejudiced against him. Do any of you want to be like Shylock? No! no. I heard about this dude. Once during a ride, he tried to burn down this slum king's house. Only the wind changed, and the dude's house got burned down instead. <laughs> I think the same thing happened to Shylock. <laughs> Analogy. Excellent, Martin, excellent. Truman, your turn, Peach. I'd like you to go to the board and spell the word analogy. Analogy. That's coming along very nicely, Brenda. Very good. Rose, please, will you show us where Venice is on the map? Her Class, what is that in Italian? Perfect. And that's exactly what your spelling is. That is perfect. Very, very good. Very good. Rose, Venice. There it is. Shows that you did your geography homework last night, didn't you? Yes. Thank you. Very good. Very good. All right, Brenda. Brenda has a total for us. Brenda, what is the total? How many dollars would 3,000 ducats equal today? $43,253.10. Louder. Ad infinitum. Crazy. Without ending. Let's give Brenda a hand. OK, dollars and ducats. The Merchant of Venice is a story affected by trade, merchandising, and the merchant. That's the one who makes it all happen. For instance, famous Amos. He's a merchant of what? Cookies! And my daddy was a merchant of Alabama. And believe me when I tell you, we never went hungry for anything in our house. I have $30. The price of gold has gone up. I ought to get me some. Then maybe I'll be rich. That is called speculating, Brenda. But the price of gold can also go down. So if you're going to speculate, be sure it's money you can afford to lose. Where do you go to speculate, Mrs. Collins? Well, here in Chicago, you go to the Mercantile Exchange. Now, after we finish our research, and we know what we're looking for, we'll pay them a visit. Yay! Yay! Children, my ladies and gentlemen, we're visiting. Because they're all interested in buying and selling. That's what it's all about, buying and selling. Well, Remember merchandise and Merchant of Venice? That's what it's all do about. Do they really have the money down there? No, they don't keep money here. What do the people in the yellow do? The ones in the yellow are called runners, and they take orders from outside brokers. What do the people in the red do? The red are brokers that work here at the Mercantile Exchange. What do the people in the green do? The green are our trade clerks. Now, they settle the fights. The fights that go on between brokers. Like they a have referee? To... That's right, yes. been so happy or proud in my life. I have written each one of your letters because you're all tested like superstars. Yay! Hey, Patty. Yeah. Rose. Martin. Woohoo! Uh, Clarissa. Yeah. Cindy. Truman. All right. Bless you, Angel. Roxanne. Brenda. No, it's got to be delivered day after tomorrow. Get it for half that at Dunbar's. What if we pick it up? Hold on. Daddy, next Wednesday, 
can you? You bet we can, Princess. You bet we can. That's not a bad price, but I'll have to call you back. This is gonna be some party. Jacose. J O C O S E. It is an adjective. It is a word which comes from Latin, meaning a jest or joke. It can also mean humorous or witty. Mrs. Combs, how do you spell flippant? Flippant. You know, when Tina first came here, I, well, I wasn't all for it. Yes, yes, I know. Children, this cake is absolutely delicious, but you know I don't like to spend the money on things like this. Well, don't worry. Tina got the best price for it. You should have seen her. A shy little thing on the phone, negotiating like she was buying a big corporation or something. Well, now, you're looking at a 10-year-old that's reading at an 11th grade level. Yes, sir. Uh, nobody pulls the wool over my baby's eyes. Not no more. Oh, but you know, kid, the, the, the bakery where we got the cake, I had to drive 20-some odd miles to get there. <laughs> you know what? I would have drove 20,000. Mrs. Collins, this is for me, with help from Charles Dickens. Our distinguished guest, the ornament of our room. May you never leave us but to better yourself. And may your success among us be such as to render bettering yourself impossible. So may thy face be biased when we close our lives indeed. So may we, when realities are melting from us, like the shadows which we now dismiss, still find thee near us, pointing up. Thank you. Well, <laughs> we've got to get back to work. We have promises to keep them out to go before we sleep. Miles to go before we sleep. Very good. Children will work on their math and the older children on Einstein's theory of relativity. I don't know too much about it myself, so we'll have to learn it together. Clarissa, are you a genius? No. Is your daddy a millionaire? No. Well, open the book. At the end of the first year, every one of Marva's learning disabled students tested at least five grade levels higher. Very good. Tina Boland is a straight A student at a local high school. When she enters college, she plans to pursue a career in teaching. Eddie Banbauer's mother became disillusioned with the public school her son attended. When she brought him back to Westside Preparatory, the one-room school was unfortunately too overcrowded to accept him. By the middle of her second year, Clarissa Lester, previously considered to be retarded, had won an Illinois State Young Writers Conference Award. Her mother is now a teacher at Westside Preparatory. Martin Luther Jones was recently offered a full scholarship to college. He is still not sure what he wants to be, a pilot or a judge. The success of Marva Collins drew nationwide attention. When President Reagan invited her to serve as Secretary of Education, she respectfully declined, choosing to stay a teacher. In the fall of 1981, Westside Preparatory School, with an enrollment of 200 students and a waiting list of 800, moved into its own building. The continuation of Marva Collins' dream would be a high school, 
and ultimately a college in this neighborhood to which she is so dedicated